a practical guide to dipping your toes into the painting and modeling aspects of miniature wargaming. In our last episode, we talked about a real quick and dirty basic way of getting a couple of boxes of figures, getting them on the table, and shoving them around, rolling some dice, deciding if this is the hobby for us. Now that you've experimented and you've decided, this is a lot of fun, but I'd like to take my game to the next level. This is the video for you. And I'm actually not going to start with these figures. I'm going to start with something a little more, little more uh, grounded. And by that, I mean the ground. This drop cloth is a simple piece of... Uh, what do you call this? It's not felt. It's uh, it's a uh, a t like a terry cloth, and I picked it up in tan, and I took a can of green spray paint. So the the cloth itself costs like five bucks. I got two kinds of spray paint. See the green and the and the brown in there, and I just held my can way up above, and I just sprayed it psh, 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 to give it a nice mottled appearance. That's all you got to do. And now you've got like for ten bucks, you've got a piece of fabric that's the right size for you. But our figures are going to get really bored playing on this bowling green. So we need to add, look at these wonderful little science fiction, the mants, I guess you could call them. Here's an aerial view of my drop cloth. You can see the little brown pattern in there. It looks like I burned it a little bit here or it got rubbed. It's fine. It's fine. It just looks a little different. It looks good. Here's our mants. Here's our, I've got some, uh, I've got some female android type figures here. For my science fiction games and uh th there you go look at that and she's stacked not bad i love it now the question is if i have to play a game on this i'm gonna get bored real quick because every point on the battlefield is like every other point how do i mix things up a little bit well the easiest thing to do is take literally anything and i'm gonna use we're gonna come back to this see this is a washer set i use these to base my miniatures see look see the little see the little washer there how convenient but I wanted to show you how to make terrain. This could be a book, it could be anything. And now look, now I've got a hill. See how easy that was? We're gonna get creative here, guys. This is a green scrubby. I use it to wash my pots. If I trim off a piece of it like this, here, may maybe I can even get away with doing this live on camera. Look, I'm, I'm showing you how to live on camera. If I trim it like this and you notice Notice how it's kind of green like that? Look, I can put that on the top of my hill, and then my space android has something to hide behind. I just made myself, and maybe, maybe I even have to lay it down so it doesn't fall over. I have hedges now. Do you have any idea how many feet of hedges you can get from one of these things for like a dollar? We've already got some interesting terrain, and we've only spent a couple of bucks. I have a, a dirty blue um, mouse pad here. If I put this in the corner, look. I have a little bay. I have a water feature. This is called a tongue depressor. You get these at the craft store for crazy cheap. Paint it blue and look, now I've got a stream that cuts across my battlefield. And you know, maybe you can't cross the stream except at a ford. Look, now I have a ford. You can cross the stream here. You've got some options and it didn't take all that much. This is a little plastic plant from I don't even know what it's from. You can, you can get these at the craft store. Go down to your local florist shop. Your big box stores, like Walmart, if they have fake flowers, you cut these off. Now, here's the trick. You see how good this looks compared to my figure? It's just a nice big... And, and you get this for like $4. You'll get like 20 of these. Well, but notice how it falls over. Okay, well, that's fine. I can put a clump of three or four of them and make a big clump of trees. Or this is where these guys come in handy. See this washer? All I need to do is take the super glue, same super glue I used for fit for my figures. And remember in the last video we talked about this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this on there, and I'm going to glue it in place. I'm just going to glue it right in, and then the washer will help it stand upright. If you have to, you may need to trim off a little bit of plastic down there. But now, just like that. In fact, I may not even need to glue it to get it to stand up. I'm doing this live, people. We're doing it live. Well, yeah, you do need the glue to get it to stand up. But but take a look at how good that looks for a piece of terrain. Now my 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 fembot has something to hide behind as she shoots at the manse. If you want to get a little more advanced, you can take this green scrubber and just lightly brush it with a little bit of yellow paint 
and you will get something that looks a little more natural. This is awfully monotone. Most bushes are not this, maybe it's two-tone with a little bit of shadow in there. Picking out some highlights really makes this pop. When you paint your stream, don't just paint it one blue. Put some little blue, put some light blue squiggles in there. Well, what kind of paint do you recommend? Well, for starters, spray paint. It's your friend. You, you put your spray paint primer on here and then you can paint it and then the wood will soak up that primer. And then what you're really doing is painting the primer a different color. You paint it the dark blue, little light blue squiggles, and it looks enough like a stream for now. Don't be intimidated by all of the big, beautiful, realistic battlefields. You know, they're 10 by 10 tables. That you, you, this is a very introductory video. Just get some stuff down on the table so that you have to think about what you're doing and give your figures something to make them decide, to give them some choices that have meaning. Do I go over the stream or do I run for the bridge? Do I go over the hill or around the hill? I've got a forest. Do I want to go to the left of the forest or around or to the right of the forest? These things all, you know, your, your opponent gets a vote and he's going to decide which way he goes. And those choices are what make this game very interesting. But the next question that I want to talk about is the figures themselves. They will come something like this. This is a, this is a pewter figure and paint won't stick to this metal very well at all. So I'm going to use a primer. Any spray primer will work. Some work better than others. The stuff you get at your hobby shop is $20 a can. It's got a nice smooth finish. It goes on in one coat. It's great. I use basic primer. Krylon, Touch and Tone, Rust-Oleum. It doesn't really matter. The thing you want to look for when it comes to the primer is on the back here, at least on this one, Primer Gray. All of your primer is going to be just fine. You are you may want to if you if you're not using a can that says primer on it, make sure it's flat. Paints have several different kinds of glossiness. There is a high gloss, there is a satin, and there is flat. You want flat. It it doesn't have any shine on it at all. See how that's not shiny at all? This ruler over here is a glossy and the the paint, see how it reflects the light? You don't want that. You want a nice, bland, almost a chalkboard feel because then when you go buy your, and so this is like five to 10 bucks a can. It's cheap. It covers a lot of miniatures. After you've got your figure based, and this guy comes with a suitable base, but if you've glued a base on, don't worry about texturing it. Right? I have nice little grassy tufts and it's, I actually put sand down and all that. This is a quick and dirty way to get into the hobby in a way that looks nice. Uh, you can, there's plenty of videos that talk about detailing. Go look at those guys. I'm just trying to get you guys to the table. You got your figure. You, you, you put it down someplace outside and you, shh, you, you guys know how a can of spray paint works. You let it dry for at least an hour, you know, probably overnight, and then get yourself a selection of these. There are a couple of different brands of, this is, a, it's called acrylic paint. It's water-based. You clean it up with just water. There's apple barrel, ceram coat. Doesn't matter. You see these little bottles here? They cost like $1.50 a piece. Now, you can go out and buy miniature specific. There are companies that will sell you these, the, pay, the paint specifically for these miniatures. And they'll charge you 6 to $10 for like a half an ounce. Don't start with that, okay? You, you don't even know what you're doing. You're, you, you, this is fine, okay? Get, spend 20 bucks. Get your basic Crayola colors. Plus, so that's, you know, your Roy G. Biv, brown, black, white, gray, and a handful of others. Generally, what you want to do is get a dark green and a light green, a dark blue and a light blue, a dark red and an, well, oh, red's a little funky. Go go look at the videos for those. You know, a dark purple and a light purple. Orange, a dark yellow. Again, you, you get the idea, right? A dark brown and a light brown. You want two colors because it'll help your minute fig figures pop and it'll give you a little bit more variety. For about $25, you will wind up with a really good selection of 20 different colors that you can paint. And the great thing about these miniatures is they are paint by, they're almost... They're almost like coloring books. Paint by number. I look at a guy like this and I say, you know what? I know where the skin is. I'm going to paint that a flesh color. I see his black suit, 
he's got gray lapels, and I they're always oh, got a little he's got a little handle there on his gun, right? What color is his hair? Obviously, I went with a sandy color here, right? A little light brown. Just how, how did I know to paint these buttons silver? Well, I know what color buttons are. I know what color an undershirt is. You can figure out what color to paint things. Uh, she's probably a little uh, complicated. Let's look at this guy. So he's very similar. He's wearing a suit. Now, he's a 15 millimeter figure. He's got kind of a jacked up face, but that's all right. Blue jacket. I could have painted it green. I could have dabbed on some camouflage, right? Same thing for his pants. I could have given him camouflage pants. But I knew he's got a little wrench on his belt. Wrenches are silver. What color gloves? I, it doesn't matter. Right? You make that up as you go along. How do you get that paint on the figure? Well, go down. This is one point where I say, look, go to the craft store. Go to Hobby Lobby. You want to get paint brushes that look something like this. And you want to take a look at here. See, this is a 3-0. This, this middle one is a detail brush. Find a really tiny brush. This is a round, I don't know, number three, and then I have a, a one quarter. So I don't even know what those are, but generally you can buy these in a three pack for about $7. You can get really high end $20 paint brushes at your, your hobby shop. If you're just getting into the hobby, just, just spend three or $4 on a brush. This three pack is like $7. That I, I, some people swear by natural fiber, like, I don't know whether it's horsehair fiber, or, or some people swear by nylon. You don't know. You're just getting into this. Your goal is to get a brush, get some paint on it, and get some paint on your death cult figure dude, right? Don't worry about all the details. Just color by numbers. These are skulls. I'm going to use white. Generally, you want to start at the bottom and work your way out. If you paint the little stuff on the inside, then you can cheat and use. It's three dimensions, right? You can use that to your advantage. See how my brush kind of hovers? It doesn't touch the little chain mail in there. That's how easy it is, right? And you can kind of mush the paint. See, he's got a little sword in there with a skull on the pommel. I can put my brush down and I can kind of mush it in there use the three-dimensional aspect of the figure to full advantage. Why do I have three three different brushes? Well, I might want to paint a big surface like his, his, his cloak back here, and I can block that in with this big brush. I also use that big brush for, well, obviously bigger areas. You can use this brush for the terrain we were talking about. But because you're going to be painting guys that are this big, um, this big, you need to have at least one little detail brush so you can get in there and paint just that skull, right? Or just his little gold skull cap. Uh, that, and that's it, man. That's what you need to start painting these. The kicker is put them on a, a washer or a penny or whatever. Prime it with a flat primer. Paint with water-based acrylics. In our last episode, I recommended you buy two matching armies from, I think it's Alliance Miniatures 172nd. These bottles have lasted me five years, and I paint a lot of miniatures. All right, you, you do got to shake it up a little bit before you use it. And, oh, by the way, this is how I paint. I take the lid off, and I just tap my brush in there, and then I put it on the figure. And when I'm done, I just put the lid back on. Okay. Some people talk about, well, you know what, you can do this. You can, you, can, you can open it up and you can put a little dab on a piece of paper. You can. I never do. I just paint right out of the pot lid. Now, I've got my figure painted, but I'm going to be running him all over the table. I'm going to be handling him a lot. I'm going to throw him in a box with 50 other figures. That paint job is going to get nicked and dinged and scraped. If you want to protect that paint job, you'll also need a can of this, Matte Clear Enamel. This is a spray paint that is, like you see on the lid, see that lid is gray because it's gray paint. This lid is clear because it's a clear material. There are other things you can do to protect your miniatures, but for now, this is all you need. All right? Spray paint your guys. Maybe spray them twice. Give them a good, good double coat. And now... In the event that you accidentally drop this guy on the floor, you're not going to lose the paint on the edges. 
I actually add another layer. You can get a pot of this that is clear coat. And I brush that on these guys really good, paying attention to the areas that are most likely to be dinged. You know, the hands and the top of his little cloak here. Obviously, the folds of his cloak are not, generally speaking, going to be banged around on the floor or, you know, the box sides. But I, I paint that on. So I use a three-step process. I spray this on. It protects the paint. Then I brush on a clear acrylic and I let that dry overnight. And it has a little bit of shine to it. So I hit it with another blast of matte clear enamel. I've got three coats of protectorant. If it gets dinged on top of that, there's nothing I can do. I did everything I could, and I'm not going to worry too much about going back and repainting all of my figures. I've got hundreds, and, you know, those little dings and scratches, they're part of the personality, right? They're part of, it's like an old guitar that you took on tour 10 years ago. And I remember that scratch, because I got that scratch when I was playing before an empty crowd. An empty crowd, sure, we're going to go Yogi Berra style today. I was playing for an empty crowd in Orlando when I got that scratch, and I'll never forget that night. Largely the same thing with these guys. And the same rules apply for big figures, for little figures. There are a lot of advanced techniques. I highly recommend go look up Vince Venturella. He's got a bunch of really good videos that go into way more detail than you need if you're just starting out. But I think this is a good introduction to your figures. So we'll review one more time. You get them on your base. Spray paint with a primer. Paint with water-based acrylics. Paint by numbers. And then spray with your matte clear enamel. This painting getup, everything you need should run you less than $40. Once you've been painting for a while, you get your first 80 figures painted. You're going to want to know, well, how can I make them look better? What are some advanced techniques? How can I texture the base? Those are videos for guys that focus on this. I'm just trying to get you started. Trying to get you to be a little bit less intimidated. And give it a shot. It'll take some time. Like all good hobbies. Be patient. You'll get there. How do you eat the elephant? One bite at a time. One miniature at a time. Before you know it, you'll have hundreds. I hope this helped some of you new guys and you old guys that have been doing this for a while. Feel free to chime in with anything that you disagree with. we got a great comment section down here. One of the best comment sections on YouTube, which is a pretty low bar, to be honest with you. But they're wonderful down there. And if you have any questions, hit them up. I'm sure they'd help you. In the meantime, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I'm praying for you.